Hi, Noah Taxia Nation. It's Thoughtful Tuesday. And on this Thoughtful Tuesday, I thought that I would do a special podcast on the holidays and what it requires from somebody with a taxia to go to different events that they may be invited to. And with me today, I have my husband, John. And as many of you know, John has a taxia. And so I'm going to interview John um, for his perspective in terms of this. So welcome, John. Hey, how you doing? Good. <laughs> I'm good. All right. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about what goes into your preparation for when the holidays roll around and there's different events and so forth that we have to go to. What does it take for you to prepare yourself to, for us to go to some of these events? Well, um, it took me a while to kind of get the hang of it. I try to mark things down in my calendar. I look a couple days ahead, and then if I have something, I really try to do family events around the 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock mark, so I can either take a nap in the beginning or the end of the day. And things in the morning sometimes can be tough because then I'm shot on time and things later in the day work well. Yeah, um, getting rest and the appropriate rest is important. And I know that in the past, we've, we've, run up, we've run up against some resistance from family members because, you know, they're used to doing events at certain times and those times don't really work for us. So we've kind of had to put in some you know, rules, if you will, it's not really rules, but we've had to kind of say, you know, that time really doesn't work because you need to lay down and take a nap. How do you feel that that's been received from some of our family members? Well, it always sounds funny. One thing, I guess, is, you know, my husband has to take a nap or I have to take a nap. That sounds kind of funny coming from a 50 plus year old person. Um, but you know what? It makes my day more enjoyable and it just took me a while to learn that I have to do it no matter what, and then I enjoy my day. It seems like when I skip that, I become then probably grumpy, or as you would say, I'm nipping. Or you're not really, you're not really in, into it. Into it, yeah, yeah. You're not like participating. You're kind of like sitting on the couch and barely able to keep your eyes open. And then I need to listen to what's the matter with him? How come he's not having fun? Or I have to listen to you. What's the matter? What's the matter? Yeah, what's the matter? What's, How, the matter? what's going on? How come you're so quiet? But we have learned from previous things that um, if you're not able to take that rest, it really doesn't work. Do you remember the time we had the cookout in the backyard and you were cooking because we needed to get all the food prepped and everything by like one o'clock and you were way past your rest schedule and you just kind of like passed out one of the chairs and I was like, okay, everybody, the food's ready, let's eat. And everybody was flipping out because you were over and it looked like you had just passed out. Remember that? Yeah, I do. Well, the funny thing was is you constantly tell people this happens and or I have to live this kind of way. And then when they physically see it, they're all like freaked out. And it's like, we've been telling you. But, we've told you. <laughs> and so you, you know, so you might have to repeat it many, many, many times to people. And I it just, I don't feel uncomfortable anymore saying it because it is what it is. So... There's nothing worse than being uh, tired and fatigued. And like I always say, you know, you think that you get it sometimes and you say to me that all the time, but it's like you really don't. And we beat ourselves up because our mind wants to go, but our body just doesn't go. And uh, I'm just tired of beating myself up. So it's yeah. me first. Yeah, and we and we experienced that, and so did our family. And I think ever since that event, they don't ever question now if you say, you know what, that time doesn't work for me. I really need to come later. 
If I knew that, I think I would have done that sooner. <laughs> I know, right? You would have probably done that sooner. But I think that's really important, right? So, you know, they may not have to change their plans, but they do have to understand that you may not be there from the start, that you may end up having to come a half hour, an hour later. Yeah, and you know what? I have no problem of going to sit down on a couch or a chair someplace and I close my eyes. I mean, that's what I'll do. And, you know, another problem that just arises to me that everybody sits sits down to eat and I'm like one of the last ones because it takes us longer to chew and make sure that to do the swallow. Uh, many of us can't really drink out of a glass and, you know, a straw is, is a preferred method. Um so the, there's a lot of uh, things that the families just don't get. They probably see you all the time drinking from a straw, but do they ever have straws in their house? No. No, I know. So sometimes you have to come prepared and you have to bring your own supplies. <laughs> but I think that the most important thing is you want to participate in these things. You want to be part with your family. And so if you can work out a compromise that works well that you're able to get some rest before attending, then it makes it just more enjoyable for everybody. No, I, I definitely agree. And you know what? It's really, it's good for everybody to get out of the house. There's many times that I'm just tired. I, I don't want to go out. And I kind of push myself to go, and I kind of enjoy it. So it, it's a good way to get out. And so often we all say, nah, because we just think of all the hassle of trying to get there and the things that we all got to go through. But you know what? We all do the same thing every day. So you know what? Live on the edge. Well, and I also think that, you know, it helps with depression. Um, you know, at this time of year, a lot of people can feel depressed or isolated and alone. So if you can just plan ahead then you can enjoy these things and keep yourself upbeat during this time of year. And it doesn't have to be a sad time or a depressing time. You know, you don't have to feel like you can't participate in these things. Yeah, it, it, you know, a lot of people go through a lot of different things. Nobody has a perfect life. Some people like to portray like they have it, but we all are dealing with something, whether we had a, a loved one lost at this time of year or something tragic just happened or there's all types of things like that emotionally. And I just think it's good to get out with people and, yeah, and make enjoy, the best of it. enjoy this time with family and friends. I absolutely agree. Is there any um, piece of advice that you would give somebody listening today? Run? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anything that, I mean, we talked about yeah, pre-planning, no, yeah. making sure that you get your rest. Is there anything else that you might want to give as a piece of advice? Yeah, well, one thing I, I mean, I, I always do is not particularly this one thing, but uh, we might not have some place to go, but you know what? Go over and visit your neighbor if they invite you over or if anybody, a friend or whatever, invites you over. If it's going to a movie, you know what? That sounds great to me. I mean, so you got to go do it. And uh, if we live next to people, you know what? It's always nice to go over and just visit, bring them a coffee, cookie, something. And I just think that it, that makes the world a better place. Yeah. Also, maybe they'll take time maybe to even learn more about you. Right, you could get you could get the word out about what's going on with you, you know, like just educate them a little bit. And then, you know, they may stop in and check on you from time to time. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, all right. So I think that, um, you know, we're just offering this as like a relatable piece of information. You know, um, John has ataxia. These are some things that we've learned in our experience in dealing with this. And we hope that somebody that's listening out there, this may be a vote of encouragement for you. Just do a little pre-planning and you'll be able to enjoy this time of year. And we would be really interested to hear from you, to hear about some of your tips and tricks that you use to get yourself motivated, get yourself out with your family and friends, 
regardless of whether you have a taxi or not. So I think, um, you know, leaving us a comment or two, letting us know what you're doing at this time of year would be really great to share because you may be helping somebody else that's listening and looking at the comments. Sounds good. Happy holidays. Happy everybody. holidays, everybody. Thank you for listening in to the Did You Know podcast with your host, Dana Morrow. Please subscribe to this channel to hear all of the latest podcasts. We hope that this podcast has provided you with valuable information and inspires you to advocate for yourself and educate everyone in your circle. Remember, you are the expert and best spokesperson for your rare disease. Thank you.